Good morning from Sailing Trilene. Um, an exciting day today and one which I am approaching with a certain amount of trepidation. Today is the first time I service my engine entirely on my own. When I say service I don't mean any sort of deep service but we're talking fuel filter change, agglomerator clean, oil change, impeller change, water pump impeller change and I think that's all that actually needs to be done today. It's um, it's not that I haven't done it but I've always had someone else around and either been um, holding things for me or I've been holding things for them. So this will be an interesting um, excursion into trying not to drop things into the bilge because if you drop something underneath this engine it disappears forever and ever and ever, amen. The first thing to do is to get the engine warmed up because I surely can't get the oil out unless it's nice and warm and flowing freely. Changing the oil is relatively straightforward. Unlike on a car, I can't lift the engine up to a convenient point and just open the drain plug and watch it all trickle out. So instead what we do on boats or a lot of boats is use a vacuum oil changer where you insert a very small diameter tube down the oil dipstick tube and then put a vacuum on that and you just pull the engine oil out. You don't get all of it out every time but you get enough of it provided there's not something grossly wrong like water in the oil or metal fragments everywhere that it's okay and you're cycling the oil which is what you're trying to do. The vacuum oil change on this boat takes about half an hour because it's only got about three litres of oil in it at most and I tend to get about 2.7, 2.8 litres out when I do it. There might be a few hundred mils in the system going into the filter so it's really quite a good change. On this engine to put new oil in you just open up a nut on the top of the valve case and pour it in. Um, in my case from a measuring jug that I normally use for measuring water for cooking so that has had a very good clean. Um, it is a bit disgusting to have done that, I, I recognise, um, but it is clean oil, so. And then you just do the nut back up and measure the levels. If they're okay, check them again in a bit and off you go. So I really couldn't show you getting this bit out. This is the anode for the engine. So this is a copper washer and this is the zinc um, and it's in a brass nut. Um, and this lives in a hole round the back of the engine where the idea of getting a camera as well as my head is um, for the birds. So what I, I mean the anode's actually in really good condition but I suppose I should probably change it because I've got it out now and I've got spares. So um, there we go, I shall endeavour to see if I can get this out. The next thing on the list is to change the water impeller. The water impeller is an engine driven pump which pulls cooling water from the sea into the engine block and stops the whole thing from overheating and going bang. So it's a really important component and it's actually a very small and quite fragile component so it's recommended that you change it at least once a year and especially recommended when the engine has been resting over the winter as this one has because then the impeller is in the dry and is stopped in one position so the rubber gets stressed in a particular way and that can make it liable to break off and the main risk of it breaking off is not only that you don't get enough water going into the block and the engine goes bang but also that the bits of rubber break off and go into the cooling channel and then they block the cooling channel or they block some of the cooling channel and then the engine might not go bang immediately but it is not good for the engine at all so that is why we are changing the impeller. It's not a particularly difficult job. Uh, you unscrew some screws and you try hard not to lose them because they are um, pretty particular screws. And then you take the faceplate off. Between the faceplate and the actual pump, there is a paper washer. So that has to be cleaned off if you haven't managed to get it off in one piece. And hopefully in the packet, there is another paper washer. If there isn't, you can fabricate another one out of some paper. But in this case, fortunately, there was one in the spares packet, so I'm all right. The impeller gets lubricated with a water-based lubricant before you put it in. There should be a little packet of that in the um, spares kit 
If there isn't, then you can actually make do with KY Jelly or any other intimate lubricant that's marked as being safe uh, for rubber. Usually those are water-based and you can find them in the chemist. So that's the anode done, the oil filter done, the oil reloaded, the impeller changed, the impeller full of water pump, and now I move on to the bit that I really don't like, which is the fuel system. And I don't like it just because it's messy and I'm not very good at catching all the diesel that comes out. So um, we might end up with a boat smelling of diesel, which would be unfortunate, but um, not the worst thing that happens in creation. So I've just had a cup of tea. In fact, I'm still just having a cup of tea because I needed a break. Um, there's only so much contortion that my body can take. It's um, one of the consequences of spinal injury is that you get spasms and uh, they can lock you up or they can kick out really hard. And the consequence of that is that you can end up well, I have ended up stuck in various places around this boat at various points. So I've learnt to take a break because uh, it's better that way and I make fewer errors as well. What we're looking at here is the agglomerator, which is the first of three filter type objects. Um, so the agglomerator is a, a thing which should collect water and stuff in the diesel. It's not really a filter. Um, and then downstream of that, as in towards the engine, there's what my American colleagues call a raycore, colloquially. It's a residue that's come out of the agglomerator and you can see the black stuff or the dark brown stuff in here. There's just a little bit of sediment in the bottom of the diesel. Um, that's about, let's think, between 50 and 100 hours running um, since I last cleaned the agglomerator and it's been over winter so I'm not too disappointed about that. I think that's a reasonable a reasonable thing. I'll maybe strain that out so we can look at it. After I've run this through the coffee filter, you can see is there are a few tiny particles in the diesel and a little bit of sediment in here and that was just suspended in the diesel. I've had a bit of reduced output this week uh, in part because I met up with a friend and that was great. They're working on a sea school boat uh, locally and um, it was really nice to see them. They also sailed the Andrew Castle Foundation so um, I was very pleased to hear about what they were doing and in part because I have a little pressure saw on one of my feet and so I have to be really really careful that it does not become a big pressure saw. Pressure saws are something that happen to anyone who's got neuropathies, um, classically people with diabetes, people with spinal cord injuries and they happen because we don't know that something's putting pressure on our skin and it puts so much pressure on it that actually the skin's damaged and it dies um, and then you can get into real trouble and that the best solution is to get the thing that's causing the pressure off and um, sometimes that can lead to people having to lie on their face for three months which is not much fun but um, that's the way it goes so what I've had is really a tiny, tiny, tiny problem with one of my feet, which happens because I use big leg braces to um, walk, and sometimes they don't, um, they, they just rub, perhaps, or there's something underneath them, or some other contamination gets next to the skin. So I'll show you what that looks like, and uh, it's not grim, don't worry, and um, what we do about it. Yeah, so this little dot here, which is actually scabbing over quite nicely now that is what you see when something's going okay you can see there's a, a little area of um, redness spreading this axis round it um, but actually that one looks like it's going to be okay and the reason one of the reasons why I'm really really careful 
about this stuff is that they leave areas of skin that is permanently uh, weaker. So if you look at this little defect here, um, that was from a pressure saw caused by a splint about 10 years ago and it's never quite healed up. It's always been a bit more vulnerable to getting knocked or whatever um, than anything else on my skin and it causes um, occasional flare-ups. And because it's on the shin, there's very little blood flow um, and so it, it's not well vascularized is what, what people would say and therefore it's harder for the skin to heal. So I think the last couple of days we've approached peak chaos, at least for this particular part of the product, project. Peak chaos occurs when not only am I working in one part of the boat, living in another, but I'm also moving things from their deep storage in the area where I'm working to, well, I'm not quite sure where, possibly the part where I'm living. That might be why we're in peak chaos. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing this morning is, is just finishing up on the wiring in the heads, just forward of me, the bathroom, and that will um, really <coughs> complete that project apart from putting the trim back on, and the trim's very nearly ready, it's just finishing up its varnishing today, or maybe tomorrow, so that'll be good. Uh, and then we can declare victory. So finishing up the job in the heads has involved mounting up new bases to attach cable ties to, and then mounting cable tie bases onto those nice wooden pads. They're just epoxy to the hull for now. Then there's been lots of um, drawing cables through conduits which are inevitably too small and um, then mounting up junction boxes and connecting the conduits just so you've got a nice tidy fixings in the head. And now in the heads I have more lighting than I have in the entire rest of the boat which is really nice because before it was a completely Stygian hole. <laughs> 